<sighs> Epio? Mm. What's wrong? Hey, Alfred. I've just been so unproductive lately. Mm. I just feel like something's missing. Have you ever tried maybe a keyboard? Keyboards? I love keyboards. Well, I heard a certain productivity expert just made the most productive keyboard ever. Wait, Ali? Doesn't he sell classes? What is he doing making a keyboard? Yeah! You're gonna be so productive. We're gonna get new videos every day. Uh... I have never seen this before in my whole life. I tried Ali Abdal's keyboard, so you don't have to. Wait. This might be different than I expected. Now, I get it. You probably have a million questions. So before we get into what we have here, let's get into how we got here. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at some wild marketing claims, some even wilder prices. And then finally, I'll be taking a deep dive into Ali Abdal's keyboard to see if you should even think about considering it. But first, I want to know how he's trying to sell this, because that's a really important core of it. So, let's look at the marketing. Oh, yeah. If you don't know who Ali Abdal is, he's a YouTube productivity specialist, a former doctor, and a book writer. But I've also heard that he sells courses, so... Let me just take a look at those real fast. So his class is like a dollar. That's no big deal. Wait, what is this? Okay, I don't see a dollar sign. Let me just hit. A thousand dollars for a course? What? You could also pay. No, you're kidding. I'm in the wrong niche. I've been doing this wrong my whole life. If you want me to take one of these courses so you don't have to, then please leave a comment and get subscribed. Because I'll do it. I'll spend five grand so you don't have to. I, I'm crazy. Now, expensive courses aside, he just launched a keyboard. And that puts it square in my domain. If you don't know who I am, howdy hey. I'm Hippio Tech, and I try keyboards so you don't have to. In fact, in the last couple years, I've tried over 300 mechanical keyboards. And all I can think of is why. What business does a guy that makes thousand dollar courses have building a custom keyboard? Well, he says it's because he's a productivity expert. And obviously keyboards make you more productive. Well, some of them. <sighs> Why did he launch a keyboard? So I'm gonna delve into his marketing before I look at his keyboard to see, is this all just a scam or a cash grab? Why is a productivity guy getting into keyboards? And for that, let's go to his website. Hey friends. Hi. This website that you're on, Light Mode, is a brand new tech and a productivity brand that I've been building over the last 18 months now. Wait, wait, wait. So he's been building the brand for 18 months. Let's just put a pin in that. I wanted to create a brand of tech and productivity accessories. Having some nice tech and gear and accessories to use genuinely makes the experience of working or studying or building a business or whatever the thing is more enjoyable. That is true. That's why I'm like a keyboard evangelical. What's, for example, a really nice tactile and... Wait. Tactile? Remember that, he, he said it's a tactile experience. Could we build a really cool keyboard that would make the experience of typing feel just that little bit nicer? Okay, I like the branding here. And the claim is that he built a very nice keyboard that will enhance your typing experience. Let's just think about that as we go into actually looking at the keyboard nicest typing experience that I personally have ever used. That's actually really sad. I want to get you a better keyboard. Let's hit my DMs. Let's work on this. Everything that we produce is going to be aimed at the sort of mid range of the market. So he's not trying to be budget. You can connect the keyboard to whatever device you want by using our beautiful braided USB-C cable. They braided the cable. And overall, it's a really beautiful, nice, tactile. Wait, he's calling it tactile again. That's light enough to carry with you wherever you go. So this board is going to be really lightweight, but also feel nice. Maybe they've just put foam in it and like no other additional weights or something like that. So that was the intro video. However, I also found some other interesting stuff on their TikTok and Instagram. I wanted to tell you today about the launch of a new tech brand that I've been building over the last 12 months. Didn't he literally just say that he spent 18 months building this brand? Let's go back. Over the last 18 months now. Okay, let me play this real fast. Over the last 12 months. What happened to the six months, Ali? What happened? Where'd they go? We 
are trying to build the world's best suite of productivity tools and tech and now that is a crazy claim these are the best tools for productivity now the other stuff he was actually like quite delicate about it he was like ah oh, this might feel nice this might help you type but now he's called it the best productivity tools it is fundamentally a productivity brand. Now, I get that he's branding this as a productivity brand because he's a productivity expert, but at a glance, I really don't see anything about this keyboard that's gonna make you more productive. Now, I'll get into that a lot more later, but I'm already incredibly, incredibly skeptical. We wanted to position this as a very reasonable, affordable, mid-range brand. In doing that, you've also put yourself against every other budget offering unintentionally because if the budget offering provides a better experience for potentially half the price you've got quite the problem and that might be something that we run into later now i want to get my hands on this keyboard as soon as possible however there's a problem when he first launched this keyboard it wasn't actually available in the u.s i had to get my way i just had to call upon a certain British friend. Cherry MX Browns. Cherry MX Browns. Cherry MX Browns. Okay. Ah! Now that was easy. Here's what I'm going to do with it. First, I'm going to determine, is it a good product? Then I'm going to determine, is it priced fairly? And then I kind of want to know, will it make me more productive? And ultimately, should you try it? We're also going to be comparing this against all of his other marketing claims and a couple other budget keyboards, because I genuinely don't think this is mid-range. And I'll tell you why later. Now, with the keyboard in my hands, I was experiencing simultaneous dread and excitement. Now, dread, because if I really hate this thing, then I'm trashing on a YouTuber's product, and a lot of people really love that YouTuber, and excitement, because I can trash on a YouTuber's product. Anyways. Hey, Hippo, you're gonna say it's terrible now, right? No, Alfred, I just started the unboxing. I have to give it a fair chance. I mean, he poured 18 or 12 months of work into this thing. You're gonna say it's terrible now. Right? No. Ooh, that's... But now you're gonna say it's terrible. No, Alfred. Go back to your dungeon. One thing I won't trash on is their packaging, because it is surprisingly nice with one of those nice slippy boxes. The manual makes a lot of sense and has all of the macros you might need. And there's some accessories, I guess. One of the highlights actually being the braided cable. You know, I did make fun of it. They braided the cable. They did braid the cable, but hey, it's nice. Now, moving on to the keyboard itself, it comes in two different colors, a cobalt blue and a coral orange. Now, I'm not really sure how it's gonna make me more productive, but the gradient keycaps are very pretty, so I'm gonna give him a point for that. But you know what's not pretty is the fact that they call these keycaps, or this keyboard, the pinnacle of ergonomics. Now, I've been known to do some memeing on ergonomics, but um, there is nothing that stands out about this keyboard's ergonomics whatsoever. Like, it's fine if you just want to make a basic keyboard, but just don't make the claim. Speaking of claims, this thing is entirely plastic, which I claim to hate sometimes. Although plastic can be good, so we'll put that to the test later. Oh, what's that? Later just called? And uh, the plastic is very cheap and reminds me of a budget keyboard? Okay, well that's fine. This thing is probably really affordable and really cheap and, um, wait. You're kidding, right? Now, it's not the most expensive thing ever, but it starts at 159 US dollars, which is really staggering when you compare it against things that are similar. Like the first thing that comes to my mind is the Keychron V2 Max, which is already about 60 bucks cheaper. Or the Womier SK71, 60 bucks cheaper and has 2.4 gigahertz. Um, pardon me. Can you tell me the difference between these two keyboards? Oh. It's like 50 to a hundred dollars. This one, is, I can't, I can't even do this with a straight face. I feel like it's kind of crazy. Now his keycap design is gorgeous. I'll give him that, but like, what do you mean? It's basically the same case as an RK68, as a GK68, as any other budget keyboard. And I mean, you spent 18 months building this, maybe because you really like the YouTuber, but I would really hope that the YouTuber would do more for you than make a half-assed tech product. Huh. So already I'm starting to question the 18 months or 12 months of design that went into this, because what did you 
design. Now, maybe there's something under the hood when I take this thing apart that's really gonna shock me. So I wanted to go ahead and weigh it to see, hmm, maybe it's nice and lightweight for travel. And oh, don't look at the scale. I use this scale for baking, for baking. Some people watch Ali Abdal to be productive, other people a uh, bake. Now to its credit, it is lightweight, but actually a bit heavier than I was expecting. For reference, a keyboard made out of full aluminum is about a pound heavier, but even more perplexingly, the low free flow, which is also full aluminum, is lighter. Also, I mean, this is just a side tangent. It's probably way better for productivity and way more premium for the same exact price. They, uh, they, this is not sponsored. This is not sponsored. I still really like those boards. I use them like all the time. So then this mystery is starting to get a little bit deeper because is this just a cash grab keyboard or is it a productivity tool that he genuinely cares about the progress of? Now, to be fair, I might be incredibly underwhelmed, but it isn't exactly a bad keyboard. Now, it doesn't have any gasket mount, and it is lacking a lot of enthusiast features that you could get for cheaper. But it does do what it says on the tin. It's a keyboard, and it does feel relatively nice, which we'll talk about more soon. Now, this bottom design really, really reminds me of the Keydeuce NJ68. However, there are some differences, so I can't exactly say it's the same OEM. But he definitely used one of the standard China partners for making keyboards. However, something that is relatively good to see is these Gateron, what I think are pro yellow threes. These are definitely the highlight of the board as they're an incredibly smooth factory lubed linear switch. Gateron yellows have come a massive way in the last couple years from being a switch that you needed to lube to being just a really good switch. The stabilizers are also fine, no. but... No. And that's definitely a sad sight. I'm not sure why you would go with north facing LEDs if you didn't have shine through keycaps and it just shows that they probably didn't do their research. But as I said before, these switches are definitely carrying the build. They feel really nice to type on, and these dice sub keycaps are relatively thick, so your typing experience is not fantastic, but it's definitely way better than a basic gaming keyboard or a basic Dell keyboard. Now, the stabilizers are factory lube, so he's got that going for it. And the, uh, wait, why isn't the board turning on? Um guys um let me look at the manual real fast okay it says fnr oh i had the factory reset it out of the box that's good now the epic gamer rgb is a fine touch which we always love we love the epic gamer rgb here now in just a minute i'm gonna take this whole entire keyboard apart and i'm gonna try and figure out if i can see any clues as to where this keyboard came from but first how does it sound stock But that's not the worst of it, because we haven't taken this thing apart yet. And generally with custom keyboards, a lot of what's important happens on the inside. Now, it's fine. Like, it sounds about how you would expect for maybe about half the price. Because it's just a cheap plastic case, you aren't exactly getting the best sounds ever. And this just kind of leaves me wondering, like, was Ali procrastinating? When, when he made this board, was he not productive? because the disassembly of this keyboard is absolutely horrifying. You have to pry these clips up, and these are the tightest clips I've ever seen in a keyboard. I have never struggled more opening a keyboard. I had other work I needed to get done. I needed to file my taxes oh or- Oh my god. Oh, okay. Ugh. I imagine because he's charging a mid-range price for this, he's obviously stuffed it with foam or dampening materials or something to improve your typing experience, right? Because you really want to be productive while you're typing on this, right? So he's put foam in it, right? Right? <laughs> oh my God, bro. Oh, I have never seen this before in my whole life. Well, it has an internal weight. They glued huh? metal weights to the top of the case. <laughs> Most notably, you will see no foam in this keyboard whatsoever. Now, foam isn't an essential part of building a keyboard, and it's totally preference, but I can't imagine leaving it out in a budget keyboard like this because it's not helping your case whatsoever. Now, I wanted to try and take it apart to see if I could see any manufacturer's markings or anything like that. 
Now, I did find a marking for an IFD-68, which is a keyboard that came out in about 2018, but that didn't really lead to anything else. Now, ultimately, I trolled Alibaba to try and find a similar board that maybe he just used the OEM for to customize it. And he definitely did his cleanup. The closest thing I could find was the Kidus NJ-68, which is eerily similar. Like, so similar that maybe this is what he used. The only difference I could find was the location of the switch on the back being here instead of here. That's a pretty minor detail, but it's still enough that I wouldn't call it the same board. Either way, it is really, really weird that you worked 16 months or 12 months or whatever to build a keyboard. And what did you do? Was it ship time? Was it all just ship time? There's a lot of things lacking here that literally any other keyboard would offer foams maybe if you don't want foams any anything else might be nice maybe not just random bricks now you're probably wondering hippio why are you so angry about this and honestly for me it's about the fact that he's trying to appeal to an audience that knows nothing about keyboards but with a sense of authority as a productivity expert essentially he's selling them a tech product that's worse than what they could get with a little bit of research but because of his authority, he's trying to get them to not do the research. And to me, that just feels a little bit scummy. I mean, there's a reason why I haven't made my own keyboard yet. If I ever make a Hippio keyboard, my channel's gonna be over because it will be the best keyboard ever. You can clip that and take it out of context for if I ever release a keyboard that sucks somehow. Ultimately, I don't see any reason why I could recommend this keyboard to you. Now, it's perfectly fine, but so are a ton of other keyboards that are either cheaper or provide you way more value. Just because something's fine doesn't necessarily mean you should get it, and that's fine.